Thank you. Thank you very much. About um, three or four weeks ago, I was sitting at home thinking what I'm going to say today. You probably know the feeling. You open your computer, starting a new document, trying to type the text that you're going to talk about. As I was doing that, I looked in front of me and I saw my kid. He's three years old. He was playing on a tablet. And just next to him was his sister. She's two. And they were laughing and playing with the tablet. And as I was watching that, I realized that their future is going to be very different than today. They were born into a world where fingers are used to browse content. They were born into a world where video is used to connect people. They were born into a world where everything is online, when everything is available everywhere they go. This is their world. They don't know any other world. Can you imagine how this world is going to look like five, eight, ten years from now? As a CTO, but also as a father, let me paint the vision of this world to you. But most importantly, what does it mean for us? What does it mean for our industry? What does it mean for our community? But before I'm doing that, I would like to remind you how we grew up, how technology shaped our life when we grew up. So let me show you a short video about that. Remember this? And this? It was a time when the internet was slow. Phones were phones, PCs were PCs, and this was a tablet. This sound meant you have mail, and this was the only place to watch TV. Our lives have changed. We live our lives through many devices, in many mediums. We share, we laugh, and we love. Our one device has now become many connected devices, many connected lives. And one day, we will look back and say, remember this? I'm sure one day my kids will say, remember when daddy used to have a smartphone? Because everywhere you look, no matter what source of information you're going to use, is it the Gartner report, the IDC report, academic reports, there is a consensus. There are going to be billions of connected devices around that. 50 billion devices. Can you imagine that? there will be more connected devices than people on the planet. In the 90s, we used to call this mobility. Well, actually, we turn it off on this desk and open it on the other desk, hoping there's going to be internet connectivity. Today, we are all walking with this kind of devices. They are always on. They are always connected. And that would make the big difference. And the biggest shift in the industry will be when everything is going to be connected. We truly believe that the biggest shift in the IT, in our world, in our life will be when everything is connected. It's going to equal to the time when we connected electricity to our home. Let me illustrate to you how this future is going to look like. I'm going to use an example from the healthcare and fitness industry. And the reason I'm going to use healthcare, because everywhere you look, it comes quite clear that healthcare and sport and fitness are going to gain a lot from this connected world. So let me show you. Here is a family of four, two parents and two kids. And they're having wearable technologies. And as a parent for young kids, you really want to know what happens to your kid when they cry at night. Either the body temperature going up and they're sick. And for the dad, after the age of 40, 
you do want to monitor your heart rate to make sure everything is fine, that you're not getting any kind of these diseases. Wearable technology will be able to help the busy mom to make sure her fitness, her activity is going okay. But for the kids today that are spending their time watching VODs, playing games, and with 7% diabetes in the world, you can have a wearable device that constantly monitors the sugar level of those teenagers. This future is not that far from us. But for us, it was very important to show this illustration in front of a group of consumers. We wanted to understand how will they understand this world. Is this something far in the future, or is this something they are ready to consume today? And this is exactly what we did last week. We presented this illustration in front of a group of people in London. Let's see how they responded to this reality. My mother-in-law, who has high blood pressure whenever she's in a doctor's office, but it's fine when she's at home, and my father-in-law, who has seizures, and he never knows when it's going to happen. It doesn't happen very often, but if he had a thing, you know, a minute or two ahead of time saying, this is about to happen, that would be a huge help. If you didn't have a support network around you, I think it might be quite yes. reassuring to know Actually, the danger signs. You know, if you've got people around you can ask them, that's good. I think if you weren't in that position, and I think a lot of people are really worried about when is the right time to do anything when a baby's small, because you, you're just not used to it, especially if it's your first child. I have a friend whose son is diabetic, and they have webcams installed in every room of their house so that they can see him in case he goes mm. low. She can check those from her phone, so that would be a big comfort to her. I think it's also a balance, isn't yeah. it? Because you don't want every people spending their whole time checking them. You know, all the mm. monitor says that, you know, you need to be able to have a life as well as actually you know, use the information and it's what you do with that information. Both my nan and my dad, um, they're both quite unwell at the moment. And my nan's been quite unwell for a couple of years, but she doesn't like doctors and things, whereas my dad sort of jumped straight on it. They found out that he was unwell through another reason he was going for being unwell sort of thing. So obviously if he had a device like that, it would have told him his health problems already. It would give you a bit of peace of mind, especially you know if you were monitoring babies anyway, it's just a step on from that and it, it's good to have the information and then you can choose how you use it. Consumers find an immediate value in these wearable devices. They clearly understand how it can make their life easier. And in this example, I just used healthcare example, but here in the room you can imagine we can look on connected cars or smart home, any other example. But there is one thing that we all are aware coming out of all these devices, and this is data, a lot, a lot of data. Just imagine, if you look on the content on the web today, this content was created by humans, by people sitting in front of a computer, typing, taking pictures, uploading their videos. With connected devices, they are always on. They are always around us. We are redefining what does it mean to be online. And these devices are constantly creating data for us. Data will be created when we are just walking to the shop. We don't need to sit in front of any machine and type that. So let's take an example. Like many of you, I'm traveling a lot. And January was a very busy day, uh, month for me. I was traveling around the world with this device. How many of you are having Android over here? And how many of you are having Google Now running? I do. And when I'm traveling around the world, this device is constantly broadcasting my location to the Google server. Do you want to see how data aggregated from a whole month looks on a map, here it is. What you see here is my travel during January. It started with a consumer electronic show in Las Vegas. Then I moved to our headquarters in San Francisco. Then I was in a press conference in London. Then I was in another conference in Germany. Then a weekend in Tel Aviv. And then I'm in Prague. 
it was all generated automatically while I'm just holding this device everywhere I go. But it's not just these dots. Every 500 meter, this device generated a content, my location. Let me zoom in. This is a prog. Every dot here was created automatically. It's a lot of information created from a single device. Now imagine, what does it mean if I'll have five other devices? Well, actually, I do. I also have my fitness wristband with me everywhere I go. And it monitors my heartbeat. It monitors my activity. And that was very interesting to know what the company is doing with all this data that this device is sending. So I went to their privacy policy on their website. And yes, I admit, I'm the guy who reads all the privacy policy of all the products because I'm really interested to know what are they doing with my data. And this is what I found. As you can see over here, my gender, my age, my height, my weight, the data coming from the device, and be sure with advertisers and third parties. We get it in the room here. Will the average consumer understand that? Will they understand that the data, their very personal health information, as one of the ladies in the presentation said, their very personal information is now automatically created, sent to a third party. But there's another question. How is being sent? Is it secure? So let me show you another example for my very personal life. As I'm traveling around the world, I install an IP camera in my living room. How many of you have IP cameras in your house? Because I want to see my kids when I'm far away. I want to watch my living room when we as a family traveling around the world. So I install an IP camera and I can access it from my phone from a browser, and when I'm doing that, I'm being asked to put my credentials. I see the SSL and the lock icon in my browser. I have a security experience. But wearing my CTO hat, I also was very interesting to know how this device is broadcasting the information to the air. How this device is sending the video so I can see that everywhere I go. So I put a network sniffer in my network at home. And take a look what I found. For those of you who are familiar with the HTTP protocol, can easily identify that the video stream went out to the air unencrypted. And also my credential, unencrypted, going into the air. So me as a father, I thought I'm doing the right things for my kids, installing an IP camera so I can watch them, or I can watch my house when I'm away. I end up doing the very wrong thing by dis disclosing everything I have in my house to everyone that can have access to this stream. Are we ready to connect to this kind of a world? Will the average consumer understand that while being asked to authenticate to access the stream on the phone or on the, on the, on the browser, while the device itself is broadcasting everything unencrypted? Are we ready for that? So let's go back into the um, illustration I showed you before with all the wearables technology. And let's see what type of data they're sending to the air. So here's again, this is the uh, device uh, that you'll put on your baby to monitor the body temperature. So where this data is going? Well, it can go directly to your doctor to help you, but it can also go to a very large data center with big, big data analytics, people will start to tag you and know the age of your baby. And for the dad that is monitoring his heart rate, maybe the data will go to the insurance company that will find out that there's something wrong or they will give you the better offer. And for the mom that wants to just monitor her activities and fitness, this data can also go to different providers. Will she understand that this is where the data go? And same for the kid. Their data can go to third parties as well. So now that we understand that although these devices can provide us many benefits, we're seeing the type of data that they're sending out. 
Let's show that again to consumer. And let's see their reaction now, once they understand how this data is being sent out. So let's see their reaction. I'd say definitely worried and as with the last point saying how it was really good for children in the same way now like if you had obviously when children start to get a bit older and they're going to school by themselves and stuff like if this information is just going anywhere you don't know who's got their name they're, and especially if it's a medical detail obviously anyone could get it and they could say oh like your mum sent me because obviously we know you're, you're diabetic I've got your stuff in the car like you just don't know so I think that's it's worried me more, sort of looking at it from that angle. You'd need some kind of reassurance, I think, that as to what was happening with the information. Otherwise, I think people would just be taking the wearable technology off. You know, I think you only need one person, or somebody you know, or a member of your family, or somebody who would have a bad experience with it. And then I think people would just decide, just, I don't want it. I think it's quite scary to think of all your details, especially health things, things you might not know that much about yourself. Like, I don't know my blood group and and anything like that. So for someone else to think they know more about me than I do, I think that's worrying as well. How many people already use things like my fitness pal to record what they eat and what their workout was, a Nike training camp and that this, that and the other. So I think a lot of it comes down to personal responsibility. You need to read the terms and conditions, which most, pe most people don't. You just tick the box and go on yeah. to the thing. And it's getting people to be aware of what they're doing. It's something like this, which is, could be, is quite intrusive, in a lot of ways, then you obviously would need to be particularly um, tuned in to what the implications could be. It's such a hard job to control everything on there that you could make up a different website every day and put whatever you want on there and by the time someone finds it, they can shut it down, but it's already been on there. So I think it's always going to be hard to control the safety of it. It's a very interesting reaction. Once they start to realize what happened to their data and who controls that. Are we ready to connect into this world? Are we ready to have millions and billions of devices around us constantly creating the data and sending them out? It is our data. Where is it going? Who is storing it? Who is securing it? Well, that was a quick preview on how our future is going to look like. But what comes quite clear, the life of the tech hero at home, and I'm sure in this room many of you are the tech hero at home fixing those computers and those devices, the life of the tech hero is going to be very complicated because we barely manage the PCs at home. Now we have smartphones and tablets. We're going to have more of those connected devices. Remember this sport day with your kids? where you took your smartphone and used the high-definition camera over here and pictured them doing the activities. And then you went back home and you just wanted to watch the video over here. And you don't know how to copy the file from here over here because you can't send it by email. It's just too big. This very simple task becoming quite complicated for a lot of people. We need something that will bring all of that together. We cannot work in a world where each device will have its own interface. Each device will have its own uh, um, dashboard or information. We need to bring everything together. We need to make sure it is safe, it is secure, that we can trust it. We are here today to announce on a solution. And we believe we found a solution. We call it Zen, AVG Zen. AVG Zen is about the person, the consumer behind all these devices, the ones that you have today, the one we will have in the future. AVG Zen brings all these devices together. It connects them together into one interface. It helps you to discover what is you missing. It brings all the information into one place. It makes sure you receive actionable information at the time you need it and you're not being annoyed by different messaging and different alerts. It makes sure it's consistent. Let me show you how it looks like. In the beautiful design, 
bringing all my devices at home, my PC, my smartphone, my tablet, into one interface. I don't need to go and log in into different interface every time. I'm getting all the information about the security, about the privacy, the safety, the performance of these devices. And it's not just my devices. It's also my family or any other person I want to remotely see and manage and control. Because we believe if you give the control back to the consumer, they'll be able to benefit from all those devices. Give them the control about their privacy so they know if someone is sharing their information or not. But also, we want to make sure it is consistent. No matter what device you want to access this information, it looks exactly the same. You don't want to log in into one interface for one device and another interface for another device and another interface for another wearable or another car. It all comes together. And AVG is then doing like, exactly like that. It is proactive. It calls you when it needs your attention. It doesn't disturb you. And it is available everywhere you go. No matter where you're going, you'll be able to see what happened with all those devices. When I'm traveling around the world and my family having a problems, I know that. And I can see that for my device. We're bringing AVG Zen to the market with 177 million users on it to a market that is $1.9 trillion, as it's projected by Gartner and other analysts. But it's not just for the devices I have today. If you walk upstairs in this conference, you will see more and more technology dealing with the smart home. You will see technology that deals with fitness wristbands. You will see technology that deals with smart cars. And AVG Zen was designed for the future. Because today, it will bring the devices that you own. But it was always also designed to be ready for how your future, the future of the consumer, is going to look like. And you don't want to have a different interface for your smart home. You don't want to have a different alerting or a different access point to your smart car. You want to have everything coming together. And I would like to welcome everyone in the audience who would like to join AVG and bring the simplicity into the consumer to come and work together and bring your technologies together into the consumer. Because again, this is very important for consumer. And it comes with over 177 million users on it. So I have just one last thing for you before I finish. We have it here. We have it ready for you for a first look. You are all very welcome to our booth upstairs to see AVG Zen in action, providing the security, the privacy, the performance for your devices. It is available here, and it is available today. Thank you very much.